All right. This is the Wethersfield Advisory Parks and Recreation Board and Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. We're doing this as a Zoom meeting in accordance with the governor's directives. I'll introduce our chairman, Dan Silbo. Good evening, everybody. Um, so let's get right to it. The first thing is public comments. We did get an email from Steve Randall that he wanted to enter under public comments. So um, I don't know, Kathy, if you want to just go through it quickly. It's very similar to what we talked about at the last meeting. So uh, got it, Kathy. Um, sure. I, I believe we, it was emailed out to all of you today, too. Um, so he had mentioned that the Cove Preservation Fund um, in the budget that, that our recent budget that came out has $260,000 in it and that the commission should, should present plans and obtain council permission to use this funding in accordance with the Cove, uh, with the Cove Park Management Plan and the Harbor Management Plan. And then he mentioned numerous suggestions that he's had for this, some that we've already talked about. Um, he wanted to correct landscaping and forest management, clear debris along the unnamed stream, correct its drainage, and the passive use improvements to include a fishing dock with handicap access and railings, uh, a seasonal handicap portalette, and a low profile dock addition for paddle sport launching. And then he had some comments about um, the access, access ramp. The boat ramp is designed for year round installation and to permit access during high water. And he said that he sees the launch area being used eight months a year and the dock ramp should be extended as designed during periods of hard, hard during periods of high water um, or just leave it partially extended most of the year. And then he said the last few years, we've had a portion of the easy docks located at the east end adjacent to the old dock, old boat launch area. And he, he feels it's um, that it creates an unsafe parking and pedestrian conditions and it encourages wading and fishing there. And he feels it's a dangerous mix. And a lot of money was spent to dredge the cove and the channel and to install permanent year-round docks to save money. And that they should be available most of the year. Um, and that was generally his comments, many of which we've talked about. The handicap portalettes are on the end, the, are on the agenda tonight to talk about and the handicap parking. So if you want, we could address it at that at that time. Or any questions or about the email? Yeah, Kathy, where is the unnamed stream that he's yeah. referring to? I'm not sure. I think it's on the other side of the cove. Um, if you're standing at the boat ramp, looking across the water, past like the yacht club and things. Tom, if you, I think it's somewhere down on the far side because I think that's where MDC, I'm, I'm not exactly sure it's, so I guess I'd have to find out for you. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I even looked uh, from an aerial, you know, point of view at the cove and I mean, I, I've, done a lot in the cove my entire life, but I, I was just curious. I mean, I, I know the only thing is a spillway or whatever from MDC, um, but I don't think that that needs redirecting or, you know, if anything, let's not have it come into the cove. But other than that, I'm, I'm not aware of anything that comes in. I, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I was just curious. Uh, what I, could, I could double check. I always thought it was the MDC, that, the water that came in, but I, I could be wrong. No. Probably not water. So <laughs> just liquid. Yes. <clears throat> Otherwise, in my opinion, I mean, he makes some good points. Some, you know, I mean, 
he's got ideas to improve the cove. I don't know how the ratio is. I know he's a kayaker. I believe he's a kayaker and he's always uh, a proponent for making things better for the kayakers. I have no clue. You know, I see a kayaker now and then, but I, I you know, they they go under the radar pretty much. Um, if there's a lot of them, then I haven't seen them, but um, it seems like everything he's looking at is to improve the uh, beauty or usability or, you know, whatever, make the cove a better place to be. No, um, have we uh, found out anything about the uh, fishing dock? Have we, um, you said, I think last meeting you said the staff was looking into what a fishing dock would cost or, or something to that effect. Yeah, we're checking this year's prices okay. for the fishing dock. Um, so, so I don't have that information yet, but we're looking into it. We got prices last year and we want to look again in the, we got them in the fall. We want to look again in the spring. Mm -hmm. Kathy, is there any way while we're looking at those prices for the dock to look at pricing for extra dock that, so that current boat launch dock is accessible when the water is higher? Like he had asked. The actually current boat dock, the current docks are, are designed to be made accessible when we think the high water is coming. There's actually extra docks attached to the current dock and they literally float them forward and put them in front of the existing dock and anchor them oh. down. Has and that it, happened this year? Not yet. I don't feel like I've seen them do that. Okay. Not yet. We generally haven't done it that way only because we haven't left them year round because people drive across there all the time. Yeah. And if it gets dark, um, when it gets dark, they can't, we don't have it lit up or anything. So I we see. don't leave it there year round. And, um, and it, it's safer having it attached to the other dock because it floats in the winter and it doesn't freeze or anything. Mm -hmm. And if we pulled it onto the shore, it, it would freeze and warp and things of that nature. But it, it, it's generally done yeah, right around the beginning of May, depending on if the water's high. And the water's been going up and down. Gotcha. Kathy, I think one, one thing, I guess overall in his letter and comments, and I, and I agree with most of them, is that my concern is um, the compliance with the harbor management plan. And I'm not, I mean, I, I think I've read it and I don't know about the rest of the <clears throat> rest of the uh, board, but I think it concerns me that we, we need to make sure, and I guess I would look to your staff to make sure we're in compliance with that because he cites a lot of things that might've been mentioned there that we're not doing correctly and stuff. So he's picking up on that. And rather than be embarrassed, we should make sure that we're complying with the plan as it exists until it's changed. And I, I'll, I'll check into that. I felt we were compliant. Um, we do have permission. We do have permission from the state to put that other dock over by the, where the old boat ramp is. That was all part of the plan with the new dock that we'd keep another dock over there. So, so this, different things happened the plan at the time said certain things and then we then we applied for putting the docks in and that's a plan. So that's all been approved. So there's things like that that we do watch out for, but we'll double check it to make sure. So are these items that we're gonna discuss under old business, like you know, the porta potty and stuff, because should we defer and just discuss that as another topic or go through his letter? Because it is similar to what we talked about at the last meeting, a lot of this stuff. I think we can defer it to, to uh, old business. It's The letter is very, very similar to what we already all saw. So uh, there's really nothing new in here that I recognize too much. K Kathy, did anybody um, from uh, since the last meeting, has anybody acknowledged or gotten back to him on anything or nothing? Nothing's gotten back to him on any of the discussion we had at the last meeting that it was discussed. No, I sent him an email, and um, and I um, put in it 
excerpts from the minutes on each item that he talked about in his email. Okay. So he got an email back and I copied um, Dan and, and other people that had um, that he had originally sent it to. Okay. Yeah, I thought you pretty much addressed almost every issue in here. I'm not sure of anything that you really haven't addressed. Um, but uh, then we'll go through it again. Uh, the one thing I didn't realize we had $260,000 in the, in the uh, code fund. I didn't realize we had yeah. that. And at the time we were saving, thinking we were going to have to pay for all the docs ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a grant. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Uh, all right. Um, any other comments? No. All right, minutes from March 25th. There are a lot of minutes. Um, any additions, additions, changes? Move to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Who seconded? Tom. Tom. I did. Monthly report. Let's see here. Kathy, maybe we, we talked about it before, but what are what's the eSports club? What's the what? eSports club. Those are the um, online ga gaming that you can do. Okay, video games. I got you. Video okay. games. Yep. And I'm a novice at it. Maybe uh, one of my staff just wanted to run with it and it's, it's it's going slowly, but it's picking up more kids kids and adults. I, I thought you meant you were a novice at playing it. That you've been playing it. But, uh, <laughs> I, I I just have one other question. The, the nature center pavilion. Are they looking to put up a pavilion over by the nature center? Uh, yep. Yeah, and I was actually going to talk add it to new business on tonight for tonight's meeting. Okay. So I'll be happy to talk about it and give you guys an update. How's the uh, keen? Is that uh, how's the? It's a keen on kids after school. How's that working? Yeah, we, we only they were only able to do um, one spring session. Um, they 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 were doing. They couldn't do any of the after school programs in school. So in the fall and the winter. The schools were doing remote on Wednesdays, so they would do some classes on Wednesday virtually. And then school went back to session full time, so they ended up just doing the one program. Did I get that right, Mary? Or is there? Yeah, we were supposed to run two classes of big time science with Andrea Glico, and we had to cancel those two um, because of the, the uh, extended school extended into Wednesdays. So we were only able to do the one art class. Kathy, Kathy, if possible, um, I I have an interest in seeing it. I'm not sure about the rest of the board. Would it be possible to um, see the copies of the um, agreements that the town has with the uh, River Tour operation as well as Captain Morgan? Oh, sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Hey, um, letters and announcements. Oh. Uh, Kathy, just make sure Steve's um, email is in public comments for the next uh, minutes, you know, because he wanted it under public comments. Oh, you, instead of letters and announcements? Yeah, he said he um, wanted it right on the email. He wants it under public comments. Oh, okay. I didn't um, see so we'll, at the, in the subject area. So make sure we get that again for the next meeting. Okay. Any any other letters or announcements, Kathy? No. Okay. Old business. The fiscal year budget 21-22. Any news? I actually the town manager has presented his budget and they had the public hearing uh, Monday night. And um, now they've started meetings with the council, workshop meetings with the council and the department heads for the budget. 
So uh, Parks and Rec is up on Monday night. So this coming Monday night, we'll be presenting uh, the Park and Rec budget. And um, when the manager's proposed budget came out, if you recall, we had done uh, um, a, a possible 1% cut, 3% cut, 5% cut that we submitted to him. And he took um, probably most of the department's 1% cuts. So those 1% cuts in our budget included a lot of um, materials, supplies, equipment. We kind of went along that route to um, still say, keep all the programs. So that's where we are now and we'll be presenting to council Monday night. Okay, very good. Uh, now we come to the portalette and parking spaces. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, um, I met with, uh, I, well, I didn't meet with them. Everything, we do everything either on the phone or Zoom with the uh, town engineer and talked to him about handicapped parking spaces at the Cove and the handicapped parking lot, uh, handicapped portalette. And we discussed the parking spaces because um, we discussed how it's, it's, a, um, it's an unfinished, it's not a paved parking lot. So that makes it a little more difficult. But he said that we have the ability down there. What we could do is uh, we can put some signs up uh, and designate a couple of spaces to be handicapped parking spaces. And where we do that, somewhere close to that should be the portalette too, so that they should be near each other because he kept referring to anytime you have a paved parking lot and people are coming, you're coming to a destination. When they go to the cove, they can park anywhere they want based on what they want to do. So to look at it and figure out where the best place, because you can't put it in the middle of the lot. That you know, you can't put it down by the water because we can't get we can't get a sign or anything in, it'll always go underwater. So he suggested somewhere if we put the handicapped parking space someplace then not on top of it, but somewhere in that general vicinity, uh, put the portalette also. So he said we could look at probably two spaces in the portalette and put them similarly in the area of where we currently put the two portalettes now that we did last year. So we're gonna go out there uh, with maintenance when the weather gets nice and see if we can site it and measure it because you have to make sure the spaces are wide enough and stuff. We don't really mark parking spaces. We try to do that a little bit with when we do the, um, the Cove parking lot so we can get the boat trailers and things in. So we might be able to also mark a couple of spaces and see how long it will hold uh, because of rain and stuff. They'll paint, they'll try and paint them. So that's the plan. And I'm gonna work with our maintenance people to get it set up. And if you all agree, we'll also um, order the handicap parking, the handicap portal. Okay. Kathy, uh, Kathy, do we, um, is this just because we're trying to be nice to do, or do we legally, are we legally supposed to have handicap parking at least available there? He kept referring because it, it wasn't a paved parking lot. In a paved parking lot, they have different rules and things. He said it would be a nice thing to do if you're getting requests to have it done. He said that's a diff, but what he did say, it's a difficult area just because it's so spread out and the park goes in different directions. But that if you could put two spaces in there, you know, to help people out, it wasn't a, you had to do it. Okay. Uh, it, would be it, it would be nice to do if you're getting requests. Yeah, I, I would certainly encourage us to do it. I think it's 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 important to have, and I think we should do both. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree. Everybody else agree? Yeah. Yes. Very good. Um, parking spaces. Let's see here. New business. Um, sports leagues. Um, how's everything going with the sports leagues? Any comments or requests or 
And then uh, you sent us the agreements with the union too that we have. So how are the sports leagues going? I know there's soccer started because they called my son to referee a few games. So I know that started. Uh, is anybody else, anything else started yet or? And softball starts next Monday. Oh, guys have been out practicing. Cross has been Little going for opening. three weeks now. Yeah, Little League opening day is Saturday. Okay. How are the fields? Anybody take a look at the fields? How's everything looking? We had a game at Cove for lacrosse um, last night. They looked good. The fields at Webb were lined incorrectly. Um, Oops. But they, I think they're going to get relined before the next game there. One problem at Cove is that like this is something that I think where the the general Kathy and I talked about improving we've all talked about improving communication between parks and rec and the sports teams and physical services. But like when they mow the lawn or when they mow the grass, they don't bag the the clippings. Sorry, I'm post calling my brain is delirious. Um, they don't bag the clippings, which is fine in soccer because soccer is not played. It's played on the ground, but the ball is being kicked. It's not being handled as much. But in a sport like lacrosse, where the ball is on the ground and the players are going down on the ground to scoop it, and it's a small ball that you need to scoop up off the ball, if there's huge grass <laughs> clippings all over the field, that's a problem. And so it's, that, it's a little problem. It's not a huge deal. So coaches might not talk to Rachel who would then talk to physical services about it because it's sort of an annoyance, but it's not a huge deal. But if that sort of little thing could get fixed, it makes a difference. So I think it's like, that's one of those things that improving communication can, just a good example of how improving communication can help something small that makes a difference. And Suzanne, we actually got a call on that. And oh, okay. Rachel, so then Rachel good. I'm talked, glad communication happened. Yep. Yeah. No, and Rachel talked to maintenance and they're going to double cut. Great. So when they double cut, it will, it will, it should um, alleviate that problem. And Wonderful. it was also the, the first cut of the year. So there were a lot of things happening at once, but it did come in and they agreed to do that. Great. <laughs> Kathy, I guess, um, and, and part of this is, and, and thank you for sending this agreement. I think it's, um, kind of, I should say alleviates, but being aware of the, the union agreement, but the, the things that I picked up on is that, um, and coincidentally, I think we've tried to do this, but it's all, it's part of the agreement is that um, item 15 on that agreement or item nine, I should say, is the parties continue to practice conducting an annual volunteer day and volunteer day, they'll be allowed to do the same work, which I'm not sure the groups and, and I think it's important to meet with them and we can let them know that because obviously there's been a lot of changes and I think that's a good way to get everybody working together and get some work done. And then item 15 in that agreement as well um, is that we, you know, it's, it's agreed that we can meet and mutually discuss the maintenance issues, which again, I think coincidentally without us knowing that this existed, um, uh, we've tried to do that anyway. So I think those are two things that we need to make sure that we get done and have them happen the way they're supposed to happen. And, um, and along that line, one of the things that um, I was talking to Suzanne about is, is she had mentioned about trying to get groups together, everybody together maybe twice a year to, um, to have those discussions. And as we talked about it, um, she had a good idea. Do you mind if I explain it, Suzanne, or um, that, um, that maybe we do it as part of a park board meeting, like, like two Junes ago, you did, you invited everybody to your June meeting, and you had a, a good discussion with the sports groups, and that was kind of the start of all this, and maybe it's time to really embed the meetings right in a park board meeting, and maybe if we picked uh, the June meeting and the January meeting to um, to invite the sports groups. And if we had that every year and they always would know the date, it might be a better way of doing it. So we were going to bring it up at tonight's meeting to talk about it. That's a good idea. 
because it, it looks like when you read this item 12 is there, there, it sounds like there probably was a grievance and that's how the grievance got resolved because there was probably people overstepping their bounds and the union obviously was offended by the fact that I'm sure some of these <coughs> are doing more than they should have. I think that's, that's what they reference a the case number here. So I assume that there was a grievance that probably created this agreement. <clears throat> Yeah, that is, that's what happened. There was a year, and I, I'm going to be really testing my memory, <laughs> whatever the, the year of the, uh, the letter and the agreement and everything. Prior to that, there was just uh, volunteers gone wild, is probably the best way to say it. They literally brought a mower to a couple of the fields. Yeah. And that, do you remember that, Dan? Yeah, it was, I think it rained a lot that year. So they, you couldn't put the town equipment on the fields because it was too heavy. So in the meantime, the grass was getting extremely high. And I think one of the parents came and with a riding mower and cut the lawn or something like that. Wasn't that it? Yep. And, yep. and that was, um, and prior to that, there were a lot of little things, that, other things that had gone on. And then the mowing just put them over the edge and they did a grievance. And that's how this came out of the whole thing then. And it, and it took a while to get to this point. Back Cassie, then. this agreement still stands even though it was 13 years ago? Yeah, it's it's an official document. Okay. And I'm sure the union has a ton of copies. And we generally, every couple of years, gave it to the sports groups. Um, but maybe we didn't take that extra step and really discuss it with them. Uh, I think we go back to that communication thing that that history piece, you know, like when it first came out, everybody knew about it. They all did it. Then as time went on, the story kind of lost stuff. So that's kind of where we are today. I remember, uh, I think one of the other issues was that uh, Little League was using too much of that. I forget what they call it. The sort of like throwing the field to, to dry it out. Yeah. But they were using so much of it that they pretty much ruined the infields. They were just, you know, you're supposed to sweep the water off first and throw a little bit of that stuff on. They were using it as like throw it all on the field and soak up all the water. So it really kind of destroyed the infields, if I can remember right. So Kathy, the plan would be that when would we plan on meeting with the teams this year, if you will, in June? I thought there was enough time in June if you wanted to do it, we could get the notices out now to, for, to give some advance notice. That yeah. way they could see who from their organization would be available. I can't, <clears throat> I, I assume it would still be a Zoom meeting, but I don't know that, that might change. And Kathy. And I think, okay, go ahead, go ahead sorry. Mike. We, we were going to make sure, can we get a representative from fiscal services there as well? Yeah, I could and, certainly ask and let you know by the next meeting. Yeah. Great. And I think it would be important also to, um, at that meeting, you know, that they have a copy of this so they know what they can and can't do. Sure, we could we can make copies of this. Because yeah. ch ch chances are, I'm sure since 2008, I'm sure there's nobody on any of these sports leagues that even is aware, well, I shouldn't say they're not aware. Tom Mullis. I am. Yeah, I Tom Wall, well, yeah, the, one of the old guys, yeah. I, I know. <laughs> I, I think the last time we had one of those work days, uh, 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 softball, and I think Little League was doing it regular, more or less regularly at that time, was that eight or 10 years ago? Uh, we got about 20 guys out and worked with physical <laughs> services, skimmed a little bit and, you know, put sod down and uh, under their direction. But it was a it was a great time, improved the fields and Little League was doing the same thing, I believe. But uh, it faded from our, you know, radar. Uh, we just went on automatic pilot and I didn't know Little League <laughs> hadn't had their volunteer days for that long. I think it wasn't it mentioned it was like eight or 10 years ago was the last time or 10 or 12 years since there was a volunteer day. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, but it, but it did. We did would always bring it up with Little League at their meeting when we met with them. And there were years that, you know, they just weren't interested. I don't want to. It wasn't that it didn't come up. They just didn't feel they had the volunteers and things. 
So it was just a different time. Right. <clears throat> I, I think it's a great idea. Kathy, with the state's regulations being called off and next month, would you have the meeting live? We'd have to we'd have to evaluate how many people would be coming because we'd still have to space the board apart and stuff. We'd have to think it through. And maybe we could talk about that at the main meeting, which way you'd, you'd want it to be. Um, we're having meetings in the banquet room where we're, but we're putting, um, we're looking at it as the groups deciding if they're, if it's like a wedding or a baby shower, it's family members. So they're sitting at the same table. I don't know if all the, um, the people would want to sit at the same table and be close that, that, or do we just do um, cheer style, put cheers up? Or, or would the council room be available to spread out? It's not right now. It's not set up for that. The, the, they have, um, they have tables in there. They have uh, different, different kinds of meetings. It's not like the, the council chambers is being used, but maybe by then, I mean, things are changing every day. We can check. So I think, you know, for our June meeting, definitely let's get the sports groups in and um, let's make this something regular. Like we all said, June and January. I know uh, December, we usually have the uh, prioritization of the capital improvements. So it can't be in December. Um, any other comments? No, we good. Uh, let's see here. Solomon Wells House. Dan, before you go on, can okay. I just put a, a another item on the new business, the Nature sure. Center Pavilion? Oh, yeah. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that the Friends of the Nature Center, working with our Nature Center Director, Patrick Tellman, um, we're in, are interested in um, fundraising and building a a pavilion, if you could picture it, behind the nature center, kind of extending the length of the nature center. There's the nature center, then the garage is there, there's a little path, and then there's a big open area that's sort of parallel to the soccer field, but it's not close to it. And they're looking at the possibility of putting a, a gazebo that would be about 14 feet by 20 feet in that area to be able to be used year round for their, their school year programs and also for the summer camp. They really were looking for another place that could have some shelter that you wouldn't have to go inside, but you could be under the pavilion. Mm -hmm. So um, they got all excited about it and started their fundraising campaign before I really started getting all the approvals. <laughs> so I wanted to, I, I, that's why it came up before I could even put it on the agenda and um, so I, I wanted to check, usually we start with the board, just if that's something you're okay with. They're looking at a, uh, um, right now they're looking at a wood structure and, and possibly a prefab, like, like purchasing it from um, carefree, like I call them carefree gazebos, but this would be a picnic pavilion. So they have to go through, they've been talking, um, Patrick's been talking with our building department and our planning and our planning department to make sure we're, we, we have to look at meeting obviously all the town codes, all the building codes. And they've been doing all that preliminary work to see if it was feasible. That was what we were checking before we went through a process of getting approvals. We wanted to make sure, yeah, we could put it there. Uh, we could do these things. So I wanted to, um, to bring it to the board to let you know about it and answer any questions you might have. No, it, what, how, what size would that be compared to the pavilion that's already at Millwoods? It's smaller than Loretta's dream pavilion. Okay. It's not as big. Right. And it's more of a rectangle. Does this affect the shed that they were planning to put um, in that area for like, what's it, soccer storage or something like that? Soccer was looking at um, the Silestine Middle School. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. 
How is that? They haven't back to me yet. We gave them all the information. They were going to get back to us if they, if they wanted me to go forward and get the approval from the school district. So just waiting to hear from them okay. on that. I haven't gotten any more phone calls at home about it, so I guess they're not sure yet. So that's good. Um, well, it's a matter of placing it, and you always want to talk with the neighbors to make mm -hmm. sure everybody's okay. And one of the soccer coaches, it's sort of near him, but there's also another neighbor. So we said, do you want to talk to the neighbor? Or do you want us to talk to the neighbor? So we're just waiting for feedback. Just so you don't want to just surprise somebody with something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how is the bridge um, between field one and field two coming? I haven't heard anything recently. Um, the town engineer, we had a meeting, I believe I mentioned last fall with the town engineer, the engineer for Close Jensen and Miller and the members of the foundation for the footbridge and the members of the foundation and the Close Jensen and Miller engineer we're going to work on a design and some cost estimates. So I haven't heard where it is. I could check in again. Yeah. Is it is it Lee Stanton? Is that who it is? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Maybe let's give him a, a call or an email or something. Sure. Kathy, are you looking for a consensus on the on the uh, on the shed? I don't know if we gave that to you. No. Yeah, that would be nice if we had a motion that if you if you approve that, that would be great. So can I have a motion? Where's the exact location that they're looking at putting it on uh, Salestine Middle School uh, property? Oh, two different things. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. The The picnic pavilion is over by the Nature Center. Right. The shed is by the Salestine Middle School. Right. They want to put it by the upper field that the road is parallel to on the upper. I forget what the name of that street is. Yeah. And Maxwell or Darwell? At the north end of the field. Mm -hmm. But right near the road? No, they want to bring it in behind, behind the goalpost. Yeah, I don't know where the goalposts are, but it's, it, okay. is that halfway between, as far as the fields between, uh, the playing fields from there to the road, halfway between the two edges? Yeah, if you think yeah. of the, the rectangle of a soccer field, it's right. sort of in the middle behind yep. the goalpost. Going to be behind the two houses? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. Behind the two houses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But we have to beat so many feet off the property line too. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's at the end of the parking lot, right, Kathy? There's that little side parking lot. I'm looking at Google Maps. It's um out, out from there, right? Yeah. Because out from there, you, it, there's a there's a space between the um, backyards of the homes right. and the uh, yeah and the Google goal. Maps. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right there. Yes. <laughs> That's very good. So, would there be parking added for that, or do people? Is there parking close to that? No. There's no. No. They would drive in off the road to put their equipment in. Okay. Yeah, they would be able to drive in right off on the grass, if you will, to get to their shed. The and end of the parking lot looks like it's a field width away from Darwell Drive which is, I'm assuming, where it would be, right? Let me see. Is it, um, does it look like, is it, on anybody, a, is it on the top part? You, you know how there's that little hill? Is does that, that show yet? Oh, yeah. yeah. Behind, is that yeah. behind the middle? Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And the middle school is over on this this side. Yeah. Right. And that's right. Darwell by your right hand, right, Kathy? Yes. Okay. okay. So, All right. So that's more or less behind the middle of the three houses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's that small little parking lot just. Yeah, the parking there. lot's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Up in the, the corner. By your left hand. Yeah. So, so they're looking to keep a lot of the soccer supplies there. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and so where they they may have some play at the, these fields, but they're also coming from other fields to pick up equipment and bring it 
Yeah, they felt the Silestine has at least three fields that they use there, and that's where they think of that as their little complex. So they thought that they really, they were the ones that asked for that. And I asked the school superintendent if we could at least proceed and explore it, and he said yes. So, so are they looking to regularly, like, you know, a few times a week to be driving up across the field to pick up equipment and bring it to other locations? And They're not driving on the field. Oh, I thought you said they would drive up to it. Oh, so they would come to carry a bag of balls, whatever, to... No, they, they can drive to it, but it's not, a, it's not, you're not driving across the field. Okay. They're so they would be, drive on Darwell or to the park. They're going to come lot. in from Darwell and just yep. go straight across. Uh-huh. And just walk across the field, open the shed, get the yeah, bag. Yeah, we of told them away. they could walk, but we think they're going to drive. Oh, yeah. so they are, they are going to drive across. Yeah. Yeah. No athlete walks if he can help it. I think I'm I'm probably confusing people. I was I was looking. You need a consensus on the pavilion at the nature center. We're not not necessarily shed, correct? Oh, okay. I'm I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize we switched over, Mike. No, no, no. I, I just want to make sure we're all talking about the same okay. thing. All right. So so we're looking for a consensus on the pavilion. Is that yeah? What yeah. You're and, and Kathy said yes. Pavilion sounds great. Yeah, can somebody make a motion? I'll motion to that uh, we should be giving a thumbs up for the pavilion over at the Nature Center. Okay. Can I, and and I, I would only add that um, as it proceeds, could we be um, just privy to the plans just so we see what it's going to look like? Yeah. All right. Uh, everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? We're good. All right. And who is the second? Rich. I need to, um, I'm, there's a, an emergency at my house. I need to sign off. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I gotta go. I'm sorry. I'll see you later. <laughs> all right. right. Bye. Take it easy. Okay. Um, uh, Solomon Wells house, Kathy. I'd like to update you on, um, our caretaker situation at the Wells house. The, um, Doug Malazuski, who, um, was our caretaker. Um, he actually got a full-time job with the school system as a custodian. Uh, so then because he already works for the town, he can't have a second job as the caretaker. The nice thing is he lives with his dad at the house and his dad has always helped him out at the house. And so we asked if his dad was interested and we did an interview with him and his dad had already done this stuff because he always helped out Doug. And um, it worked out, we got permission from the manager. So we were able to hire his father, Don, as our caretaker for the Wells House. Oh, so Mary, you would appreciate that. This is the third family <laughs> member from that family. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, and uh, and it made it it made it very simple for us to do that, and we didn't have to do any training or ask. I didn't ask Doug or Don to leave <laughs> because yeah. they actually live in the house. Yeah, that's that's nice. That's good. Are we um are we renting any of that yet, Kathy? We we um we are we are opening it up um in May. And we're currently taking rentals and bookings now. We, <clears throat> we actually went down there and um, figured out how many people could be indoors and what could be done on the porch because everybody's asking for the porch. And the porch, <clears throat> the way we could set it up, it could handle the same number of people that we've always had on the porch. So there's no change in the outside use of the house. And the inside use, I think we said we could set up X amount of tables that would give people 32 people if they were having a shower or something and they needed to be inside. So um, we've called the people, we've called the groups that normally rent uh, weekdays when they have their monthly meetings there. And we're working with them now and we're starting to book um, rentals for uh, May and June and July. August, we don't rent, there's no air conditioning. And then we'll take them for September. 
And is the farmer's market set to start? They will start uh, May 20th. Yep, they'll, they'll be back as they were last year. Good. Well, that's, things are looking up a little bit. That's good. Yep. Um, Keisha Farm Committee. So there was a meeting Tuesday night, a uh, informational session. I'm not sure um, anybody here listened in or not, but um, you know we got a, a lot of input from the community. Everything from solar panels to uh, you know walking trails, athletic fields. Um, uh, there's one interesting proposal that I thought, um, which I'm, I was kind of a little scared about, is they're talking about like bees or something. Do you listen to the, hmm. so I'm always, you know, they used to have bees at the community center for those of you that don't know. And they used to, the nature center was at the community center and you can go in and see a live bee hive and the bees used to go outside. The problem is the bees used to sting everybody. So including me, uh, I had to have one dug out of my head with the scissors, as a matter of fact. So, um, you know, if you've got kids there, you really should not have beehives to pollinate things. It's not really the safest thing in the world and probably not uh, for, from a liability standpoint from the town, uh, probably not the best idea either. I mean, I understand the intent, but, uh, you know, that was kind of a little bit, frightening to me. I don't think people were really thinking about liability issues. Uh, and, uh, but it was interesting. We had a lot of different ideas and uh, people seem to either be for athletic fields or against it. Uh, other people realize that you could pretty much do a lot of stuff with, with that amount of acreage. Um, I don't know if the public understands that the um, barn is being evaluated to whether it's worth restoring, um, you know, what has to be done to it to make it, uh, you know, safe and accessible to everybody. So, cause people were, you know, very interested in it, but uh, we have no idea how much that is going to cost at this point to restore and whether it's worth restoring or not. But that was the, uh, I think it was a grant we got and did we get that grant yet, Kathy? I'm not sure. I haven't heard. heard. All right. So the state is going to come in and evaluate it is what it's going to come in. Uh, or if they hire a consultant to come in. And, but it was through a state grant. So that'll help tell us, uh, you know, what we're going to do with that, that part. Um, people were interested in greenhouses. They were interested in, uh, you know, making part of an educational function with uh, not only the grammar schools, but with the high schools. So there's a lot of different things and, uh, you know, all good ideas uh, at this point. So nothing's a bad idea at this point. So it was interesting. It lasted about two hours and there's going to be another session maybe next week. I'm not hundred percent sure. And then at that point, um, you know, There'll be, I think, another report coming out. One of the issues is the kids from the University of Hartford that are doing it um, are out in mid-May. So we're not sure what we're going to get by the end of the uh, session, but at the very least, we'll have a lot of data that we can start looking at. So that is progressing. Um, you know, it, it, it's good that everybody that called in said, Thank you for letting us have input into this and not doing this in a vacuum. So they all kind of said the same thing. It's great that we got input. The neighbors were concerned with the traffic. And we have, I think, three people on the committee from the neighborhood. So they're, um, you know, they're very interested in it. One of the things that I was concerned with when we didn't get a consultant to do the whole evaluation, we were gonna pay him, I think $45,000 is, um, you know, we don't have a traffic study. And that kind of concerns me then, it concerns me now because that would kind of tell us what kind of traffic and how much traffic those roads could handle. And, you know, um, so I, I think that might be something that we have to go out for after um, when these ideas come up, we have to kind of know about the traffic. and. 
and the parking, those type of things. So, so that was, I thought it was interesting. Kathy, did you listen in on it or? Yeah, no, I listened to the whole thing too. I was impressed that there were over a hundred people on the Zoom call. Mm -hmm. That's just, that was a lot of people because the, I don't think they had a couple of days notice, correct? I mean, yeah. it wasn't. And then they they used the chat feature and there were over a hundred chats there. So people were really involved and vested in, in, in and, and the neatest thing was they gave them a two minute time limit and everybody did a great job of getting their point across in two minutes. Would you agree, Dan? Yes, including Robert Young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to mention what he said? Well, he wanted um, a 55 and over community. So um, he did, and there's actually another man that called in too. I can't remember what his name was. So um, from a revenue standpoint, um, he's saying we get the tax dollars and, you know, if it's 55 and over, you, you don't have to uh, worry about kids going to school and, and those type of uh, issues. So um you know, I'm going to say no idea is a bad idea at this point. There is a little point that he has, I thought, and we, as a committee, we are talking about um, revenue to make things kind of self-sustaining, not that it will be, or, or maybe we can come up with a great idea that'll make it self-sustaining. We didn't come up with the idea of houses, but, you know, that's on the table as well. Um, everything's on the table at this point. So we're, I'm not going to say anything's a bad idea at this point. I, I think I might've asked this before and I apologize because I probably had an answer and I don't recall what it was. Um, is there zero funds available or I, I think I had suggested or my comment was at least to put some seed money, even if it's only 10 or, or $20,000 out of the budget. And I think the town, I know nobody wants a budget increase but to have some money available for doing something that you might need as this process because otherwise i mean it's going to take some money and i know nobody wants to spend any but i think you need something even some seed money to get something to do a traffic study or something regardless of knowing what you might want to do i think that otherwise i, I guess i'm a little leery of you know i think the expect if the expectation is this shouldn't cost the town a dime and we're going to go full speed ahead and do it's just i don't i don't see it happening yeah, I don't, uh, I don't. I guess I'm concerned about that, that I think there should be something. Now it's budget time, and I don't know who would place it, whether it be Parks and Rec or somewhere in the town budget, but I think it'd be wise to put just a small amount of money. I mean, not hundreds of thousands of dollars, but something so you have something that you can tap into unless somebody thinks that they're going to rate a fund, you know, come time when they find out. And I don't, I don't know. I'm just, that's my comment. Yeah, no, uh, I agree with you, Mike. So um, I don't think we, we're gonna get any money. I pretty much know we're not gonna get any money this budget cycle. Um, certainly after we get the study from the state, depending on what they find, we might be able to get some type of grants and everything um, through the state. Um, but we have to see what they say first, whether it's salvageable or not salvageable. So I don't know if any of you have been in there. It's, a, it's an old dairy barn. And for instance, the floor is not flat. It's, it's kind of scooped out where the cows used to stand. So it's not flat. You'd have to do everything from the floor up. There's no handicapped access. There's no elevator. You know, uh, it's not really insulated. Um, so, you know, if they were going to do something with that, it's, it's a significant chunk of money. So... Uh, you know, I think if they decide to do with it, there might be some grants and things we can look for. So there are groups that have been interested, though, that have said, like, the Boy Scouts are interested in helping us do things already, but we haven't determined um, what it is. I think Lou Sindaro as well said uh, they would do something with those hoop houses, those greenhouses there. They would help start doing some of those, but we have to... We have we have to get a full plan in place before we really start doing any of these things. So it's, it's not bad news, but it's just uh, a long process given there's really not much money at this point. We're kind of doing everything that we can ourselves. So that was the update. Uh, you know, I was actually encouraged for the first time. I was a little bit skeptical the last 
four or five months what was going to happen, but uh, I was encouraged at the last meeting. So, so that's good. Um, any other comments about anything? I don't have any comment on Keisha. I just have a, a comment or a question for Kathy. Um, and I think I asked about this before, Kathy. Could you check? There's a, I'll call it a traffic barrel, big orange you see on the highways that's been on the green on the south end, um, right on top of a catch basin. And I assume it's there because there's a settlement there. But this thing has been there for, uh, if I say years, I probably wouldn't be that far off right across from Rainer Lane, directly across where there's a, looks like a drainage swale. And I, if it is a depression, I mean, it'd be nice to, you know, maybe get it filled in or fixed so you can take that ugly looking orange barrel off the green that's been there forever that everybody mows around. Okay, I'll check. I'll talk to maintenance. Oh, it, now that uh, Mike brought up that, what's going on with the, um, do we get a grant or something for the the skating pond there in Old Weathersfield? The, um, yeah, the whole um, yeah. Spring, Street, Spring Street area, right? So what's going on with that? That right now is in engineering's hands because they've got to look at it from the, um, the, the, um, the dam itself, that perspective first. Mm-hmm. To, to figure out what they're going to do with that because the, the road wa the water the water washes over the road so they gotta they gotta look at that first and then they're they're familiar with our would they have a copy of our master plan for that area okay. so, so they have that too but right now it, it starts with them because they have to do that first yeah. beaver Brook yeah, can we, after, well, after they do their design, can all of us have a look at that? Oh, yeah, I don't believe they've gotten started on it yet, but I will, I will check with them and they could have already started the, the work on the dam, the plans, but I'll check. Okay. Kathy, is there a time limit on when that money needs to be spent by? Um, I don't know. I, there, it's, it's state funding, so um, I'm not sure, but I could ask the engineer. It's with the town engineer, so I could ask him about if there's a timeline. All right. Very good. Um, I just <clears throat> have some information. Suzanne had asked me if I'd ever heard anything about the Brainerd Airport and the tree cutting and stuff. I don't know if you're if that goes back it uh, goes back months. Hadn't heard anything in a while, and it's come up again where they're starting to talk about it again. And apparently they had a meeting where some state legislators were there and representatives from Hartford. And they were talking about, because it's the FAA, they're federal. And if they say you have to clear cut the trees and cut them down, they have that authority. And um, somebody flipping, flippingly said, well, then why should we even have the airport here if we can't control that? And so now they're, that's taken on a life of its own. So you may hear about that, but mm -hmm. they still think the FAA trumps everybody. But I just thought I'd let you know that, that at least there's discussion again on it. Okay. All right. um, any other comments? Everybody good or, all right. Um, so Harbor Management, Harbor Management Commission, um, how are the uh, moorings coming? Anybody putting money in for things yet, Kath? Yeah, we've got 16 moorings sold. Very good. How many did we have last year? 24, maybe. Okay. Do you know how 16 this time of the year compares to how many this time of the year were secured? It's, it's actually pretty good for this time of the year. Yeah, I, th I would think Because um, usually, we're like, in the past some years when we've been lower, we've been struggling to um, to even get to 20. Whereas here, we're already at 16, yeah. which is pretty good. Because yeah. the weather's been up and down. We sold a couple when it was really nice. Yeah. Um, and any update on the boat, Kathy? No, the staff member, uh, Rachel is in touch. She was talking with the vendor on Monday and they're gonna get back to us with a time. Uh, they're calling the, the um, distributor and finding out when we're gonna get it. 
So she's checking in with them every weekend, putting pressure on them to make sure we get it. Because I thought there was a, an agreement or that the deal was that they were supposed to have it within a certain amount of time. That was the whole yeah, reason that- within four to four to eight weeks. And we're, okay. not at it, we're not at eight weeks yet. Okay. On a side note at work, I'm working on uh, getting the boat renewals on our website. So you won't have to mail them in. So it's almost done. Oh. Um, the design of the new renewal is done. Um, they start testing next week on it. So for those people that did not renew their boat yet, maybe <laughs> in June, maybe halfway through May or June, that will be available. So you'll be able to renew it, but what you'll have to do is wait for us to mail you the stickers. Yep, you got yours already. Today. Yep. So. What will happen then is uh, hopefully people will renew through the website or use their phone or whatever they're going to use. So that will be taking place. And like I said, by June 1st, probably halfway through May. And um, that will make things a little bit easier for people. And the response time will cut, uh, like Tom mailed his in. It probably took about two weeks. No, oh, that's it. It'll I think a little cut, less. Yeah, yeah it'll cut it down to a week from the time that you process it online with a credit card, you don't have to write out a check anymore or anything. So that's happening too. So that's another good thing, I guess. I have a lot of fun at work. Um, <laughs> all right, anything else in the, on the uh, Harbor Master Report? We good with everything? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn if everybody's good with that. I know you've been waiting for it. Second, we already did this already earlier. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. <laughs> second, second time tonight. All right, everybody in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank Let's you. Everybody next you. Good night. Hopefully Thanks, we'll see Kathy. you in person soon. Okay, yeah. and who seconded the motion? I did, Mike. Kathy, Mike. Right. You guys all have a good evening. Yeah, Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice yeah, Bye-bye, everyone.